everyone, it's Diabetic Danica. Welcome back to my channel. Why did I just do finger guns? So today I'm finally going to talk to you about my thoughts on the Dexcom G6 after using it for a while. Um, oh my gosh, how long have I been using it now? At least two months, maybe more. So let's just jump right into it. <laughs> so the best thing about the G6 for me is the no finger sticks. No finger sticks in CGM use is a game changer. Um, it is so crazy to me that I can just put something on my body, wear it for 10 days, and not have to calibrate it at all. Of course, it takes a little bit time to get used to this idea, and so I am still checking my blood sugar before I go to bed, basically, just to be safe. And when I first started wearing it, I was checking my blood sugar just as often because, of course, I wanted to see how the accuracy was, if I could trust it. You kind of have to learn and adjust in your own time. So basically what I found when I was first wearing it was that my blood sugar on my meter was pretty much always within, like, 10 to 15 points of the blood sugar on my Dexcom G6. And that was just so mind-blowing to me because while the Dexcom G5 is super accurate, I couldn't count on it to be that spot on, that consistently, like I could with the G6. And that was with calibrating every 12 hours. So I'm still getting used to the fact that after I put on a new sensor and we go through the two-hour warm-up period, I don't have to calibrate even after the two-hour warm-up period. Like I kept thinking, oh, well, it needs two calibrations after two-hour warm-up. But no, it just starts giving you blood sugars right away. It's so nice. I remember thinking when I was a teenager and just hearing about CGM for the first time, I don't want to wear that because I already wear an insulin pump. I don't want something else attached to my body. And it doesn't even take the place of finger sticks. Like, I still have to check my blood sugar my meter. Like, what's the point? Um, and eventually, of course, I came around and I saw the value in CGM and the alarms and seeing trends and all of that awesome stuff, and I've loved it. But it's just so cool that now it's finally coming to fruition. Like, the thing I wanted most in a CGM is actually here and happening. Like, there's actually a CGM now where it replaces finger sticks, basically. And that is just incredible. Literal dream come true for my teenage self. So accuracy has been great for me. No finger sticks has been great for me. Of course, in that two hour warm up period, you might have to do a finger stick, or if your symptoms don't match the reading, you might do a finger stick, that kind of thing. But overall, um, I am checking my blood sugar way less. I basically just check it before bed to make sure that I'm doing good and it's accurate because I really trust that CGM overnight to monitor me, and that's about it. So another big thing with the Dexcom G6 is the insertion. This is what the inserters look like now. I have a bunch of videos. Um, I have a video of me trying it for the first time. I have a how-to video on the G6, so just check those out if you want to see this in more depth. But basically, I really like the new inserter. I think it's a lot easier, a lot faster, a lot more self-explanatory. You don't have to remember all these steps when you're putting it on. And now as a diabetes educator in my job, I teach people how to put on the Dexcom. And so um, some of our older folks especially have some trouble with the G5 just because there are quite a few steps to remember and some dexterity things. So the G6 I think will be a lot easier for them. I think also for kids it's a lot less scary looking. The G5 can be kind of intimidating because it looks like a giant injection basically. And even though the needle is the same size and everything it just looks a lot more friendly. And then me personally too I just really like auto injectors so like for my insulin pump I've always used an automatic inserter and so I love with the G6 and it's like an automatic inserter basically because it's just a button that you push. Because sometimes because I struggled when I was first diagnosed with a lot of needle phobia it took me like a year to give my own shot for the first time so sometimes I do struggle with injecting things or pushing needles in and so the button is very um almost disassociated in my mind wow that was a weird way to say that word and so the one button push inserter is kind of like disassociating in my mind that I'm putting in a needle because it's so automatic and I just feel like it's a lot faster too, I don't know. In terms of pain, I still feel it, but I'm a pretty sensitive to pain kind of person. Things that always claim to be pain free, I can always still feel. So I think it does hurt a little bit less than the G5 for me, but the G5 didn't hurt a lot, honestly. So I'd say pain is kind of about the same for me. 10 day wear with the G6 is very nice. It's nice that you only have to do a set change or a CGM change every 10 days. So three times a month instead of four. The G5 was a seven day wear. The only trouble I have is keeping it on my body. The adhesive comes up and it's summer and hot and sweaty and all of that. 
So I've been using skin grips, which are basically like, I should just go get them. So I have tried griff grips in the past and those just didn't work well on my skin. I don't know, they came out pretty fast. But these skin grips work really well for me actually. If I can find a link to them, I'll leave it down below. But skin grips have really been helping me get to the full 10 days of my sensor and keep it on my body. They don't peel off super fast. They're actually kind of hard for me to get up once I want them to come off. So basically I wear the CGM until it starts to peel off and then I put this on top and that helps me get to the end of the CGM cycle. The other new feature with the G6 is the acetaminophen blocking feature. So that's basically saying that when you take Tylenol, it will no longer affect the readings like it did in the G5. So you can take Tylenol and still rely on your CGM. So I got to try out this feature because I recently went on a trip to the beach in California and I got terribly sunburned. My mom and I did. We fell asleep while we were sunbathing and we just got fried. So the whole night and the next day we were just laying down slathered in after sun lotion and I was taking a lot of Tylenol to help with the pain and I felt good that I could rely on my CGM without having to get up and get my meter and check my blood sugar. I could just look at my phone even though I was taking Tylenol so I got to try out that feature. It was great. <laughs> great. It was still a really fun trip. Another new feature of the G6 is the urgent low soon alarm. So that's the alarm that lets you know when you're going to be at an urgent low, so 55 milligrams per deciliter, within 20 minutes. So it alarms to let you know that. Honestly, so far this hasn't been super helpful for me um, because by the time it's alarming to let me know that I'm going to be urgently low soon, I'm already in the 70s and I have my low alert set at 70. So it's really not alerting me that much earlier than just my low alert. Of course, on some level, it is helpful to know that I'm dropping so quickly that I will be urgently low in 20 minutes. But at the same time, I can see that with the arrows if I'm dropping really fast. And so I'm already going to take action if I hit 70 with down arrows, even if you don't say you're going to be urgently low soon in 20 minutes. But that's just me. Um, I really wish they had an alert for just low within 20 minutes, not urgently low, because I want to know before I ever hit 70. So if they had an alert that said, you're going to hit your low alert in 20 minutes, that would be awesome because I could prevent myself from going to 70. So the urgent low hasn't really helped me personally, but I guess it's good that I haven't been dropping rapidly from like 100 where it has to tell me, but I'm pretty much already low when it tells me. And then the other new thing about the G6 compared to the G5 is that it now has a slimmer transmitter. So I really love the slimmer transmitter. It basically is just a lot more flat on your body, a lot more flush with the piece that holds it in on the sensor. So with the G5, it had some jagged edges on it. I mean, nothing that's gonna hurt you, but just not as comfortable. And it kind of popped out um, from your body more. And so with the G6, it's a lot more flush with your body, a lot flatter. And looking at them side by side, it doesn't look that much different, but honestly wearing it, I can just, it just feels so much flatter. It's awesome. Another feature that is pretty nice is the alert schedule. So this was already part of the G5 system um, in America, but I know in the UK this is a new feature for the G6. And so basically alert schedule lets you set two different schedules for alert so that you can customize based on time of day and day of week basically. So for me, I have a different alert schedule set for overnight compared to during the day because during the day I prefer for my alerts to follow the sound of my phone. So if my phone's on silent, I don't want it to alarm audibly. I want it to be on vibrate. And that way when I'm at work and in a meeting or something like that, it's not blaring out loud alarms and people think that I'm dying, it can just be more low key. Whereas overnight, I always want it to be audible and loud so that I can hear it and catch any lows or highs in the middle of the night. So I have one set up for nighttime so that I'll be alerted and woken up and one set for day so that I'm not disruptive to people around me. So that way in church or work or school, if you're in school, you can be um, having quieter alerts if you so choose. So you can really personalize it, which is awesome. And then I would feel weird if I didn't address this. So a lot of people are upset with the new Dexcom G6 just because they have made it so that you can't restart sensors. So with the G5, a lot of people would restart and get a lot more wear out of their sensors. For me, this honestly hasn't been that big of a problem. I've been really blessed to have insurance. So 
I just pay a copay on my sensors. I'm not paying fully out of pocket. And honestly, I just have so much trouble getting them to stick the whole 10 days. I don't think I'd want to wear it longer than 10 days. Um, my G5s, I would restart the sensors, but I would probably only get on average like a week and a half out of them, which is about 10 days anyway. So I'm basically getting the same wear time out of them that I was before. So for me, it hasn't been an issue, but some people feel differently. <laughs> So yeah, overall, I'm so, so happy with the G6. I love it. I'm so happy I got to upgrade and hopefully you guys get to as well if you're on the G5. The accuracy and no finger sticks alone is enough for me to just be like, yay. So I feel like they did a really great job with this sensor and upgrade. It's just got a lot more features than it did before. So I'm really happy with it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I make new videos about diabetes all the time. And click that bell notification so that you know when I upload a new video. And leave a comment down below letting me know what you think about the G6. Thanks guys. Bye.